Hello and welcome to Middle East Matters. I'm Julia Kim. Coming up on the show this week. There are troubled waters ahead for Lebanon and Israel after an offshore gas production ship docks in a disputed maritime zone. Both countries are calling on the US to help renew stalled negotiations. A British man is jailed for 15 years in Baghdad after being found to have smuggled antiquities. War-torn countries like Iraq and Syria have seen a surge in artifacts being looted and sold abroad. And throwing a spanner in the works of the patriarchy, female mechanics in Saudi Arabia join the labor force. But first, an ongoing maritime dispute between Lebanon and Israel has re-entered the spotlight after a production vessel docked in an offshore gas field on Sunday. The Lebanese claim the ship is in disputed territorial waters, but the Israelis refute this. Both countries have yet to agree on maritime demarcation lines. They've called on the U.S. to mediate new talks. France 24's Nick Rushworth reports. This Israeli naval vessel is on patrol near the Lebanese border because tension has risen a notch between the two countries. At issue is the Karish gas field a few kilometers away. Israel has sent in a gas drilling ship called Energy and Power into what it says are waters in its UN-recognized exclusive economic zone. The problem is that Lebanon says the ship is in disputed waters. The Lebanese president Michel Aoun and caretaker prime minister Najib Mikati say that any exploration, drilling or extraction work carried out by Israel in the disputed areas constitutes a provocation and an act of aggression. The dispute over 860 square kilometers of waters is long-standing. Lebanon hopes to launch its own oil and gas production there. Last year, a Lebanese delegation of generals pushed for an additional 1,430 square kilometers, and this is where the Karish gas field is located. The two countries have no diplomatic ties. U.S.-mediated indirect talks between Israel and Lebanon on the issue have been stalled for months. Obviously, starting exploration would increase the risk of war. And I think there is at least one party that would be ready for such a war, and that is Hezbollah. They can easily hit maritime installations with their missiles. The Lebanese government has requested new U.S. mediation to negotiate with Israel, which for its part says that the drilling ship is in entirely undisputed territory. Now, in the meantime, Israel says it will negotiate an agreement with the EU and Egypt to boost gas exports in the wake of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. But Hezbollah has warned it's ready to use force if the Lebanese government decides that Israel has violated its maritime rights. Well, for more on this story, we can speak to Lori Haitayan, an oil and gas policy expert. Thank you very much for joining us on Middle East Matters today. I want, to start by, I want to start by asking you, Lebanon has known for some months that energy and this gas production vessel was to start drilling and delivering gas to Israel by this September. Why has Lebanon waited so long to act? As simple as, uh, as that because uh, uh, Lebanon uh, doesn't know which direction to go in these negotiations. And that is why they haven't taken any action to strengthen their position because they have different positions and they don't know what to do with that. There were no agreements in the government or in the positions of the Lebanese uh, political parties on which direction to go. And that's why it was complete paralysis in taking any kind of decision. And today they are faced with reality. The FPSO is encouraged and it will start drilling and producing. Right. And just to go back to those U.S. broken negotiations, both Lebanon Isra and Israel have called on the U.S. to help mediate. Where exactly are we with the state of talks at the moment? What are the red lines and what have the two countries agreed on so far? Uh, so basically, by, back in uh, uh, early March 2022, uh, the, um, the mediator, the U.S. mediator, Amos Hochstein, had proposed a plan or a solution for the disputed zone. And for the U.S. as well as the Israeli, it was very clear that the disputed zone is only the 860 square kilometers that we had been known for years that this is the area disputed. And the U.S. is only interested in mediating if the Lebanese government agreed on, the on that uh, surface, the 860 square kilometers. 
The, uh, pro the proposal that came to Beirut was not clear if the Lebanese authorities had refused it or not. We were not, in, we didn't have a clear answer from the government. Uh, and today, the government is asking again, again the uh, mediator to come back to Beirut uh, in order to pursue the negotiations. But from March till today, nothing has had happened, and the Lebanese government was completely in, in coma. Concretely, how much gas are we talking about in terms of a dollar figure? What is the amount of investment we're looking at here? Uh, look, Energian has put a lot of money in Karish, and we know it, uh, it's almost up to $3 billion of investment that it had put uh, to develop the Karish field and the rest of the uh, Karish North field and the Tanin. Uh, very clear, Israel knows what it's doing, Energian knows what they're doing, and they're pursuing their plans. And even a couple of weeks ago, Energian was saying that they have guarantees uh, that uh, Karish is not in the disputed field. So the question is, who has given these guarantees? Was it the Lebanese government? And if so, why today the, gov the Lebanese government is making a big deal and saying that the Karish is in disputed zone? Do you think there is a political will on Lebanon's part to potentially negotiate with Israel and get in on this huge multi-billion dollar deal? Could this be a stepping stone, do you think, for peace between the countries? Or could it maybe just degenerate and lead to war? What do you think? Uh, look, there is, I guess, the political uh, will, and that's why today the government is asking the mediator to come back and find a solution uh, to this. And it is in the interest of Lebanon uh, to really solve the maritime border issue, to be able to continue with their oil, uh, oil and gas plans. Uh, will that lead to normalization and uh, peace? I don't think uh, that would lead to peace. There is a lot. Uh, there is a longer process for uh, Lebanon and Israel to reach, uh, to reach peace, and no one uh, today is talking about uh, that. And there, the, the, the enabling environment is not there for that kind of thing. Would they resort to a force at this stage? Hezbollah is saying that they're behind the state, and whatever the government decides, then they can act accordingly. Uh, today, again, I repeat, repeat, the Lebanese the government needs to clarify its position. Is it with line 23 or line 129? Is Karish in the disputed zone or not? It's something that the Lebanese government really needs to clarify its position. Okay, Laurie Haitayan, thank you very much for joining us here on Middle East Matters. We appreciate your time. Now, Israel's government has failed to pass a bill extending legal protections for settlers in the occupied West Bank. The law gives settlers the same rights as citizens in Israel and is automatically ratified by parliament every five years. But two members of the ruling coalition from the Arab Ram Party and the leftist Meretz Party rebelled, joining the opposition against the bill. This marks a major set setback for the fragile ruling coalition that could send the country to new elections. A British retiree has been sentenced to 15 years behind bars by a court in Baghdad for smuggling artefacts out of Iraq. In his verdict, the judge said the defendant was aware that he had taken them from an archaeological site and that it was illegal to take them. War-torn countries like Iraq and Syria have seen a surge in antiquities being looted and sold abroad. France 24's Vedika Barhel reports. A court in Iraq sentenced a retired British geologist to 15 years in prison on Monday on charges of trying to smuggle ancient artefacts out of the country. 66-year-old Jim Fitton was arrested when he collected 12 stones and ancient pottery fragments as souvenirs in his luggage. And even his lawyer was stunned by the verdict. I thought that the worst-case scenario would be one year with suspension. Fitton insisted he had no intention of selling the fragments and only collected them due to his interest as a geologist. However, the co-accused Volker Waldman, a German national visiting with Fitton, was acquitted of the same charges, with the court citing insufficient evidence. He had no criminal intent. He did not pick up any antiquities from the places he visited, but his colleague James, the British national, gave him the pieces and asked him to give them back later. The pair were arrested in late March when the items were discovered at the airport after finishing their tourism expedition. Fitton's lawyer has said they will appeal the verdict on the grounds that there was no criminal intent. 
His family has started a petition to the British government to intervene. We end in Saudi Arabia, where women are moving from behind the wheel to under the hood. Some automotive repair shops in the country are hiring female mechanics as part of a government initiative to bring more women into the workforce. But as France 24's Jenny Shin reports, it's not been an easy ride for these women. Mechanics at this repair shop in Saudi Arabia are hard at work. But unlike other garages, the trainee recruits here are women who check the oil, carry out battery checks and change tires like their male counterparts. Something of a small shock for many customers. At first customers were surprised. Some of them came up to me and said, you've shocked us. They're surprised that women are working in this field, and they ask what it is about the job that appeals to us. That's the most common question. For this mechanic, entering this field was a lifelong goal she once thought was impossible. Today, the knowledge she's gained has encouraged her to obtain a driver's license herself, something that was prohibited in the country only four years ago. Working here has made me excited to drive. Now that I know the problems that a car may have, I know what could happen on the road. But it's not without skepticism from some. The mechanics here recall a male customer who once refused their services, ordering the women to leave. With time, though, some are slowly coming around. If they are here, it must mean they have training. Maybe they understand my car better than me, so it's normal. The step is part of Saudi Arabia's wider push to bring more women into the workforce in a bid to diversify the economy and reduce its dependency on oil. But the progress is gradual. When it comes to technical roles, women remain by far the exception. Well, that's it from us here on Middle East Matters. Thanks for watching. There's more world news coming up here on France 24. Special event. French voters have chosen their president and they will soon choose the 577 members of parliament who will sit in the chamber. What will be the political makeup of the new National Assembly? Will Emmanuel Macron be able to govern as he wishes? With our teams in the studio and on the ground, France 24 explains all the issues in this crucial election. Watch the 2022 legislative elections live on France 24 and France24.com.